This is the Huey Alert Podcast with Craig and Shelley Huey, bringing you the tools to transform our nation and culture, the intersection of faith and politics. Hi, it's Craig Huey, Huey Alert Podcast. I'm so glad you're with us today. And I got my beautiful bride, Shelley. Hey. And Shelley, I am so excited Hi. because Pastor Jack is with us. Jack Hibbs, wait. Jack Pastor- Hibbs. Come on. Can you believe it? Wait, where are we? We are at the NRB in Nashville, and oh, he's set up. This is amazing. Because, you know, here, here's the thing, folks. Uh, uh, Pastor Jack has one of the most amazing ministries out there, teaching God's Word. You know, you know my background with Calvary Chapel, he, he is a Calvary Chapel pastor. Calvary, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, believes in expository teaching and God's Word. And it's powerful, and God has blessed his ministry. He's got a nationwide TV broadcast and radio broadcast. He started the Real Life Network, which he might want to mention. He's had 30 years from starting in a, a home study to an incredible church that is really salt and light to his not only his community, but to the world. Jack, welcome. Thank you both. That's very kind what you guys said. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, Jack, uh, you have an amazing ministry. But one of the things God has put on your heart is to be a leader in stirring up the church and stirring up pastors. And one, one of the things that I found fascinating is this, what happened in Congress. Oh, my. Yeah, I was invited to give the opening prayer to the 118th Congress in uh, the U.S. Capitol by uh, House Speaker Mike Johnson. Yep, yeah. good guy. Good guy, great guy, actually. And so uh, I did that, but my, uh, I was, people, I guess, got confused. They may have thought I was praying to them. They didn't like it. <laughs> I was actually praying to the Lord. But um, what happened was I prayed in Jesus' name. It yeah. was unacceptable. Yes. I mentioned Father twice. That's unacceptable. Wow. Uh, I mentioned that the, that the Lord might have mercy upon us yes. regarding our national sins. That yes. was absolutely uh, something that was contemptible to them. And so 26 uh, House, Demo- uh, House Democrats wrote a letter of condemnation oh. uh, and calling against uh, your prayer, against my yeah. prayer and calling Mike Johnson's authority into question for and judgment for having me appear in Congress wow. to offer the prayer. Because I found out, you guys, that uh, they they said that I was a Jew hating, Muslim hating oh. uh, just about everybody hating person. <laughs> yeah. And um <laughs> Wow, it was quite quite amazing. Oh my gosh! And so, um, yeah, what I did was though, um, I did pray that prayer in the name of Jesus, and yet the parts about Lord um, grant mercy yes. upon us and yes. forgive us of our national sins. Yes. I actually got that from Reverend Duche in the opening of our nation. Um, I, I got parts of that prayer from Abraham Lincoln, who asked right. God to forgive us of our yes, national sins. Right. And so, unfortunately, for those 26 Democrats, they not only did not like the prayer that was not being directed to them, but they right. have no knowledge of the the chaplaincy program right. that's that Ben Franklin actually created with, with John Adams. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that... Uh, my prayer was mild compared to congressional <laughs> prayers from 1774 right. yeah. onward. So, yeah. You know, yep. Okay. You know, Shelly, there was, there was a, a news outlet that was interviewing me about this. And I said uh, it's something, something to the effect of wh- where, do you, where do you get this idea, you know, about this a Christian, um, Judeo-Christian foundation? And I said, well, it's not my idea, actually. Uh, all, all one has to do is read... Uh, the two paragraphs of the Mayflower Compact. That's yeah. right. People forget that. Yeah. Read the Mayflower Compact. Yeah. It's going to take you about three minutes maximum, and you're going to hear at least two references to Jesus Christ and to God. Yeah. I mean, the foundation, you know, really, we go back to the first great awakening. Yes. Which sparked the American Revolution. Absolutely. And then the second great awakening, which sparked the ab- abolition of slavery, destroying the evil of slavery. Spot. It was the church. Yes. And right. that's what we need today is that so revival. Well said. And that's what you, you know, I, I, I was so impressed by a, a study you did after Israel was attacked on prophecy. Yes. Because you tied in revival, you tied in repentance, 
insight and prophecy yes. that was unfolding. And, you know, Pastor Chuck, a Calvary Chapel Coast Mason, yes, yes. when I went to the tent, that's <laughs> yeah. what was there. And, and he would talk about and integrate current events. But the pastors today aren't doing that. Really? You, yes. you know, it's funny because I would assume that a pastor wants his church to be relevant. You yes. would think so. But to me, for the church to be relevant is for it to be as biblical as possible right. because the Holy Spirit could not be any more no, relevant. Right. You're right. Right. You're right. So my question, I guess, why? Jack, you know these pastors. Some are Calvary Chapel pastors, um, Baptist pastors, uh, independent church pastors where they will not touch. Yeah. If anything about Israel, they would just say, oh, there's a problem in Israel. Pray for those people. Yeah. They wouldn't talk about what was going on and how, how it related to the Word of God. Or, or, or they, they would kind of it and then downplay it and then not say a thing. In silence. And, 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 Total silence. And, I mean, here, we saw that here. Well, if, if you are some form of an investigative reporter or, right. a, or a detective, you yes. would have to ana uh, analyze this. And so you would come to the conclusion that either, um, A, uh, the pastor doesn't care, B, he's not aware of it, uh, C, he's not, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, know fully the connection of the last day's Bible prophecies right. to Israel. Yeah. And then maybe D is, is something that's even more terrifying, and that is... They know it, yes, and they deliberately keep it from their congregation, which would be equivalent to mm -hmm. what Ezekiel and Isaiah warned about, that if yeah. the shepherd or if the, if the watchman of the wall they're is not, shepherds. yeah, if they're That's not blowing they the trumpet of warning to their congregations, God says, I'm going to require their blood on your hands for not warning the people. Scary. So that scary, scary. D to me is, uh, is, is an unacceptable path. Yeah, yeah. So, so how much of, the, of this upcoming election has to do with the pastors, what they do? That's right. What do you think, honey? Are the pastors going to speak up? No, <laughs> they won't, overwhelmingly. Why, why do I say that? Because we've watched even elections here. And, and of course, very involved in California elections. Yeah. But what, a lot of times they didn't mention it from the pulpit. No. They didn't have any type of um, awareness of church no registration, registration or, you know, Ballots, not none of no no discussion wow. at all. Now that's got to be driving the two of you crazy because it, it, uh, it our relationship was first established in Southern California yes. with voter guides that's correct. Right. Yes. and getting the vote that's out right. and and teaching people their yes. their Christian biblical worldview yes. responsibility right. to steward the vote yes. for the glory of God. So, right. Let me tell you something, Jack. This is the this is the mind blowing blowing part. It's it's not only stupefying to us. We, we know pastors personally where we've told them about election forms, for example. They're like, oh, it's interesting. Can't do it. Uh, yeah, do you it. can do it. Oh, do oh, it. Oh, you mean they won't do they it? They won't do it. And, and so, they, so there's, this, there's this bastion of full-on ignorance in the Bible Belt, in yeah. my opinion. So with on with the one big hand, churches, not well, little on ones. On the one hand, we ones. have a famine wow. for God's Word. On the other hand, even those few that are teaching God's Word— they're silent yeah. about being salt and light. They're silent about uh, our First Amendment freedoms. They're silent about the protection of Israel. Yeah. Listen, I want to encourage the two of you because you plowed the ground in California for right. years. And your labors are now being manifested. And let me remind your listeners, this is, you're about to hear something that you d will not hear on national media. But I believe it's God honoring your mm. labors. In 2022, the election in such a way caused Nancy Pelosi to lose her job. Yes. Yeah. Yes. People never stopped <laughs> yes. to ask how that happened. Yeah. Well, lo and behold, California sent Daryl Issa, yep. Young Kim, Michelle Steele, yep. and Mike uh, Garcia. Garcia. And there was another gentleman up in the Bay Area, forget his name right now, and California changed the balance of power in right, the U.S. Right. in the House. Right. And, 
and today we have Mike Johnson, a wonderful born yeah. again believer who yeah. who we actually know is a real born again believer. Yeah, right, you right. know, we've known this guy for 20 something right, years. Right. He's the real deal. Yeah. But nobody's stopping to say, how did that happen? Well, right. it happened through <laughs> California. How'd yeah. that happen? Well, Craig and Shelly Yuley have been on the front lines <laughs> in California, you. and we know that to be true. Well, we appreciate that encouragement. Thank you. And we're still involved in California. Yes, of course. We still have the voter guides, and um, but we're, we're trying to expand this. And so this podcast is saying to the churches, wake up, yeah. active. So you know the pastors. What would you say to a pastor or a church leader or someone in a church that says, I want to do something? you say to them? Well, number one, they should get in contact with your uh, links yeah. and find out what's available to them and what's legal. They mm -hmm. need to know that. Right. Because yeah. we have so many fantastic liberties still. You, yeah. don't, you don't feel it. You don't think it. Oh, no, we've got great protection. Right. We've, got, we have, we've got great liberties. Let's use them. Um, but this is what I would say to the pastors is that you're going to stand before the audience of one in the end. You're mm -hmm. not here to please your board. Right. Yeah or the congregants, you yeah. are to speak truth. And if you think for a moment that, well, if I, if I really speak truth, then I'm gonna lose congregants. What you're going to lose are, is what Jesus called tares. Yes. They're, yeah. they're not yeah. real in the first place. Wow. Well, pastor, uh, maybe I, I'm just gonna preach the gospel. I'm just gonna preach the gospel. Yeah. You know, you need to repent of that if that's all you're going to do. Right. Because after you preach the gospel, right. then the heavy lifting begins and that's yeah. called disciple making. Yeah, right. Imagine that. Yeah. We evangelize, they get saved, but then yeah. listen, we disciple them in what? In every area of life. That's mm -hmm. why Jesus said, mm -hmm. let your light so shine before men. And he stated men generically, meaning let your light so shine before the non-believing world. That's that right. in the day of judgment, he's referring to when they see your good works, they will give honor to God. They, they may yeah. be lost in eternity, right. but, they'll, but they have to turn yeah. to God and say, you know, Craig and Shelley, they shined the light on this when I was in the world, and I should have listened to them. Yeah. And we need to be that salt mm, that yeah. both stings, Ooh. right? Yep. It yeah. purifies. Yeah. Uh, but um, I believe now that the, there's... Look, I'm going to vote, and I'm going yes. to encourage our church to vote, and we're yes. going to do what we have always done. But it is more evident than ever that pastors are needed now more than ever. And God mm. is calling out to them now. He's crying out to them because here's the reason why. If God is going to spare this nation from certain invasion or destruction, yeah. it's, he's going to spare it because his shepherds will speak up. His shepherds will wow. present the full counsel of God without being afraid. And... I believe now that the answer for America's future is going to be soon decided and that decision is going to be based upon God's house, not the state house, right. not the Ooh, White House. Right. It's going to be God's waiting well, to hear from his house. Like that. We know that always works like that. Every time you look in right. the, in the, anywhere in the Old Testament, That's right. especially, it's always God's people rising up against enemy. You know, right? she, you, Shelley, I think you actually, you hit the nail on the head. How many churches today study the Old Testament? Not many, like three. And the reason why they, <laughs> the reason why they're messed up today, yeah. they're dealing with wokeism right. and all that stuff, is because they've not learned about God in His total nature. Right. So here's my argument: We read the New Testament, but for a church that doesn't study the old, mm. how do you know if the new is true? No. Mm -hmm. There's no way to know <laughs> right. if the new is true That's right. unless you read the promises of the Old. It's the Old Testament that made the promises, and it's the New Testament that records those promises being fulfilled. Right, yeah. right. Awesome. 100%. Awesome. Yeah. You know, one of the things I like about what you at your church, Jack, is ballot harvesting. Mm -hmm. And um, most listeners, that's not legal in their state. Right. But a bunch of them are. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a list of states where it's legal that they can see on our website. Right. Can you tell us what you're doing, why you're doing Yep. It? I know you've been criticized for it. Oh, well, yes, but that's okay. The um, So the state of California having its super majority, yes. right? Uh, that means the Democrats have absolute power. They can do whatever they want. Yes. So for them to enshrine the Democrat Party, really, California was slated to be a one-party state. Right. And that's still their agenda. Yeah. 
So they crafted this thing called ballot harvesting, right. which sealed the deal for them forever. Well, when it became law, I want to repeat, when they made it the law, right. immediately I got Gina Gleason yes. into my office. Yep, we yeah. got a couple of attorneys together. Right. We got uh, John Eastman, who you yes. might remember. Oh, I know him. And we said, how can we, how can we take a very, very bad, bad law yep. and, uh, and do, do good with it? And so we took ballot harvesting and renamed it ballot collection. Yeah. We made the churches in California the epicenter of where you bring your ballots to on Sunday. Yep. They're in the approved, by the way, a lot of people don't know this. You get these uh, state approved, legalized lock boxes from Amazon. Right. You rent them. Uh, but we went beyond that. We set up video cameras. So you not only see the person putting in their right. ballot into the box, you see the whole process. You can not even be a Christian and pull up to our church, right. drive up and put it into the box, yeah. all with video and security right. detail uh, there. Uh, so what happened was the first time we ever tried it was in the special election with Mike Garcia. Yes, right. In the 20, in the California's 25th district. Yes. And so we went up there to train the people and uh, we did that. And Mike Garcia won, shockingly so he won. Yeah. Why, what happened? We, ins we ensured that the vote got counted and that it was uh, a vote of integrity and mm -hmm. that uh, if, you, if you did vote, you got notification, my vote was just counted. Right. So the fallout from that was ABC News, Fox yes. News, CBS yes. showing up at our church saying, right. what did you guys do? What did you guys do? <laughs> and so we showed them what we did and they said, gosh, there's no story here. Well, then the next thing was the California DNC yeah. said that we're going to be suing you for voter fraud. And they said, we said, come, come and come and see, come and see how we do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so they saw how we did it and they actually turned and walked away. Uh, frankly, we took a bad law and, and we conducted it very, very well with Sounds absolute biblical, <laughs> absolute tr uh, transparency. Yeah. And it was recorded and documented. And, um, now it's been replicated in so many counties oh, in California, yes. and we're seeing and the change now. Because that is God's secret weapon. It is. Christians mm -hmm. hold the future for 2024. Really and mm -hmm. with your ballot harvest, yep. you've been able to impact the local elections. Powerfully. Powerfully. You've been able, and any church can do this to transform. Completely you want to win the legal. elections, city councils, school board, local elections. Yes. The churches are the salt and light for that community. And pastors need to wake up and realize that they absolutely legally can do this. Yeah. It's not against the law. Yeah. We've been told it's against the law. Right. We've we been stop you yeah. the way they can. We've been told that there's a separation yeah. of church and state. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, where's that at? Right. Give me the documentation. Where is that at? It's not there. Right. The pastor, the church has its first amendment rights just as the atheists do. Yeah. Wow, powerful. Jack, um, look at this. This is a brand new book. <laughs> yeah. You want to read the title? Living in the Days of Deception. D Love that title. Yeah, D-A-Z-E. That came out of the COVID era. Yes. Um, I, I stopped doing for a, a f several weeks our uh, teaching through the Bible, and we pivoted and did a topical uh, study because I was watching everybody walking around in a daze. People, right. people either uh, vaccinated, not yeah. vaccinated, mask or no mask, right. five masks. Right. N you know, what do we do? People were confused. People yes. were dazed. Yeah. And uh, then we talked with, you know, we heard from all of the experts and then they're mm -hmm. confused and arguing against each other. And it quickly became apparent to me, well, you know what? God is not confused. The word of God is clear, but it is evident to me that we're living in the days, the fog of deception. Yeah. And so I've uh, been super blessed. Uh, yeah. Secretary Mike Pompeo uh, read it all the way through yes. and uh, wrote the forward to this book. And we're happy to say that uh, Amazon uh, is where you can get it. Uh, but they have limited purchasing of it, to be honest with you. Uh, really? Yes. Yeah, because happily to report that the manufacturer has not been able to produce enough of the books, the publisher. Wow. So <laughs> Amazon has limited to four wow. purchases per, uh, per purchase. And so, uh, but Hobby Lobby and Walmart and, wow. and uh, those stores have all sold out. Barnes and Noble wow, sold that's out. Amazing. That is awesome. So uh, we've, we've in, a, in a couple of weeks, we've gone well over 100,000 in, in purchases or I sales. I love it. It's been crazy. No, no, this is a, this is a blessing <laughs> to hear that. I want everybody to get this book. You can get it on Amazon. 
Jack Hibbs living in the days of deception. And yeah. uh, Jack, we love your ministry. We love oh, what you're doing. Mutual, we love yes. your heart. And uh, uh, thanks for the kind words. And honey, any last thoughts or questions? I know I want to pray for you. Oh, um, one last question. Yes. yes. If you were talking to a pastor right now, isn't adhering to speaking truth from the pulpit regarding political elections yeah. issue, what would be the one thing that you would tell him? I'd say, Pastor, do you realize that we are in a battle? Do you believe the church is in a battle? Do you believe that God has anticipated this battle by giving us the armament in Ephesians 6? Mm. Well, then why do you think God anticipated the armament and the fact that the church is in the battle and that Jesus said the days would be just like this? For you to equip your people for that battle. Yeah. They have got to be equipped by you to get out of the pulpit or out of the pews on Sunday and live for six days for the glory of God. And then you ref refuel them right, right on Sunday. Yep. But by all means, are your people ready to fight for righteousness? Righteousness. Do righteousness. Are you teaching your people to do that? And that, that's, that's brilliant because the one word that the Spirit's put on me ever since we moved to Tennessee three years ago is prepare. And that, that clarion call comes from the title of that book, as well as your messages that you deliver on, on Sundays. Anytime you open your mouth, you know, that's what's coming out is prepare. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and these guys have to do it. They yeah. have to do it. We need them. We do. Sure. We need them. Yeah. Jack, thank you so much. Honey, will you pray yeah. for Yeah, thank you so much, Shelly. Uh, Lord, thanks so much for bringing Jack to, to NRB today to talk to us. And um, what a blessing he is to, to the church as a whole. We thank you, Father, for protecting his marriage with Lisa. We praise your name that she's right there with him in the trenches. Thank you, God, for his staff. And I, I thank you and praise your name for his congregation that's not just physically present in Chino Hills, but that come online from all over the world yes. to listen to him. We, we, we know that you're raising up an army through yes. Jack right now. So I thank you, God, that he's been given that general anointing. I ask, God, that um, you give Jack opportunities, not just for today, but tomorrow, throughout this week, to meet specifically with other generals who have chosen to just sit on their hands while our culture is taking a dive bomb in front of our face. And I pray, God, that, that he would be given words from your Holy Spirit that would, would infect them and inflict them mm. and cause them to, to repent, because that's what has to happen, God. I pray, I pray for repentance coming straight from the pulpit, yes. from, from, the, from the men that have been entrusted with your word, yes. who have not been called to charge and take action to teach truth and mobilize their people. Because that's what we need, God. We need a mobilization of, of an army, a massive army, an army that that's, can't even be numbered. That's what we need here in this nation to, to save this republic. And it's not just about that. It's about saving others for Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I pray for that spirit of evangelism mm -hmm. to come out of Jack's mouth mm -hmm. every time he preaches yep. to these pastors mm -hmm. that are that are just they're barely telling the gospel or they're telling a wrong gospel or they're telling a false gospel. God forbid. And I pray, Lord, that you you help these guys not sleep. You're the mm -hmm. one that can get them to That's be right. restless. You're yes. the one that can get them to toss to, to and fro and not know what they're doing because they haven't done the right thing. Mm -hmm. So I pray until they do that you, you inflict them with incredible discomfort mm. within their spirit. Mm. That's what we need, God. We need them to be, to be shaken to the core of their being so that they will tell their congregation, you know, I messed up. I've messed up. I need you to listen and, and hear truth mm. and, and engage and be willing to stand. So I pray right now for all the kids that are in yes. these congregations, God, the kids that are old enough, 12 and up, to know the truth 
and to be engaged to tell the truth. I pray for them. I pray for the youth pastors that are over them that have unfortunately embraced all this woke ideology. I thank you, God, that they're going to follow leaders, generals like Jack, and hear what he has to say so they'll be inspired and they'll be trained. Lord, I thank you, God, that you are doing miraculous works right now through Jack, through his ministry, through his book, through everything he does and touches. And we pray for protection on California Yes. right now because of all the stuff that's going on there, God. You're the one that knows what's going on. You see what's going on. And we just beg you for mercy on that state. And we thank you that you've planted Jack there because he's the boots on the ground. Praise your name for the miracle after Amen. miracle. It's going to happen through his life and his ministry and his church. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, uh, Jax, oh. thanks so much for coming. You guys, thank really you. We appreciate it. And everyone, as we end, don't forget, get living in the days of deception. Well, Shelly, you want to say goodbye? Adios. Don't forget, take this podcast, send it out to your email list, text it out, put it on Facebook. Let's get this message out to the pastors, people in your church, friends, family. God bless you guys. Thanks for joining us this week. We are listener supported, so please consider partnering with us by donating at craighuey.com or by signing up for our free newsletter. We look forward to being with you next week. And don't forget to share this podcast with others.